Hi, I'm John Kiley. Welcome to my exhibition, Studio Sessions. Uh, this right here is a shadow maker, which is designed to cast shadows down onto the wall. Um, this show, I did something a little different than usual in that uh, it's kind of a survey of things that I've been working on for the past couple of years instead of one solid theme. Uh, this is Sarah. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Traver. I'm the director here at Traver Gallery. Really pleased to have you in the gallery this month, John. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, should we talk about some of the work that's in here? Yeah, let's go check it out. So this is the first time we've been representing your work since about 2010 um, when you did a solo show with us um, initially. Um, and then since then, we've done a show every other year thereabouts, mm -hmm. sometimes more frequently. Um, this is the first time we've shown different bodies of work together. Uh, what prompted your desire to do that? You know, typically when I'm working in the studio, I work on one body of work pretty focused. So if I'm working on fractographs, I'll do a series of those and focus on that. Or if I'm uh, doing blown work, I'll uh, be in the glass blowing shop doing, you know, quite a bit of blown work and grinding and polishing. Uh, the same goes for the towers. And uh, this past year it was a little bit shift in my practice, a little bit of a shift in my practice, and that I've been working on several things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say less focused, but um, just kind of going back and forth between uh, different things. One of the things that I really like about seeing all the work together like this is that it allows us to see the threads that run through these different series. Um, one of the things that you play a lot with is balance, and I'm looking at the piece right behind you there. I think that's a great example of the way that you do that. And it's something that I see in all of the series here, but maybe you can talk about this piece and sort of the precariousness that you like to um, engage. Sure, so you can see that this piece uh, seems like it's balanced almost on the edge of the pedestal. And that's uh, something that I do frequently with my work is I use this balance and an idea of precariousness. So it's important that this object is made out of glass. You know, when you walk in and you see a glass object that's at the edge of the pedestal, one tends to have a visceral, a visceral response to it. Um, but it's different than if, you know, if I thought this was made out of plastic or bronze or something, I probably wouldn't be fearful of it. Absolutely, you would have no sense of concern for the inanimate object itself. So the use of glass allows me to kind of elicit a response in the viewer that wouldn't be possible with another material. Yeah. How about um, the way that you use uh, color in your work and optics? Maybe we can look at this piece here for a moment. Um, that it's pretty um, interesting to me that you know you the way you have approached glass as a sculptural medium. Um, and use sort of the innate and unique qualities of this material to engage sculpturally. So, of course, one of the things that's unique about glass is transparency and uh, the transmittance of light. So with color, you can, uh, you can just do things that um, aren't possible with opaque materials. So this particular piece here was made uh, with three different sections of glass and is only three different colors. Wow. So I'm guessing that the folks that are looking at the video are seeing probably at least five different colors in the image there. Um, explain how you're achieving that. Well, essentially it's just the layering of color. Um, so in this case, I've got a, a, a pink or a ruby glass, uh, a yellow glass, and then this ring here is an aquamarine glass. Hmm. So depending on how you look at it, you just see different layers of color and light transmitting through it. Almost like if you were to layer films of different color and you, yeah. like when you're in any kind of color study course exactly. in art school, you see, oh, of course, yellow and blue make green. Right, absolutely. <laughs> And, you know, this particular color combination um, I stumbled on almost accidentally. It wasn't hmm. intentional to make all of these colors initially. I just happened to like pink and yellow, and I like them together. And yeah. I added aquamarine one day and discovered this effect 
that happened. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of, I guess, trial and error in, in, um, to arrive at this particular color combination. What about the way you use the interior space? And um, I mean, so when you're making this, you're actually creating essentially a big spherical form. Mm -hmm. And then after it's blown, you cut away sections. Why do you do that? And um, what does it achieve for you? Well, so I think of the form before it's cut as a sculptural blank. Mm -hmm. And really the challenge is to create different pieces working with sort of a limited architecture. And the way to do that is to remove sections and then grind and polish it. Uh, and that allows the viewer to peer inside and through the piece. Hmm. So, you know, my hope is that one can engage with the piece a little bit more than if it was just a solid um, orb. Yeah, it also really creates um, this sort of dynamic aspect to the work where depending on your point of view, you see completely different things. Um, which to me in some ways connects to the Fractograph series. I know kind of conceptually they come from different places, but as a viewer engaging with the work, one of the things that is really effective about this work is that depending on the way you approach a piece like this, you, the, just by breaking the glass in this nature, you've activated the interior of the space within the glass itself. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't necessarily the intention behind the work. That's just one of the qualities of glass that I kind of knew would happen when mm -hmm. I started making the fractographs. But, you know, really the fractographs were um, an attempt at capturing energy hmm. in three dimensions. And I was thinking along the lines of abstract expressionism. If you think of, say, Jackson Pollock uh, and one of his paintings, essentially what you have there is a record of his motion and emotion and energy captured on the canvas. Uh, and I had some of these blocks made for me with the idea of doing something very similar to the towers, which we'll touch on here in a minute. Um, but then I saw them and I thought, oh my gosh, look at these perfect, beautiful objects. This <laughs> is a way I can capture energy, <laughs> break it and reconstruct it. So this particular one was hit with a hammer and then it comes completely apart. I film it in slow motion and then pick up all of the pieces and glue it back together. So how much control do you have in this process? Very little. Yeah, kind of what you get is what you get. Um, and they all have their different challenges with reconstruction. I um, can imagine. So the Department of Justice commissioned a study years ago where they tried to recreate the breaking of glass for crime scenes. And because of the, the atomic structure of the glass, you cannot recreate the same break twice. Even in the lab, they weren't able to do that. Hmm. So each one of these I think of is, is a, essentially a fingerprint, an indelible and irreproducible record of time uh, and place and energy. And you create a video document for each one of these pieces? I do, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't use that in the reconstruction, but I just, you know, for myself, want to capture the event and yeah. see what happened. Um, in a different series that you've been working on recently are the towers. Um, and these are really interesting to me in that they are so kind of pure in their use of the material. Um, it's almost as if you've just reduced it uh, to the most essential qualities of glass as a sculptural medium, you know, using the translucency, the reflective aspect of glass, the, color, the way glass engages color. You're really pulling away from the more kind of process driven where a viewer might wonder, how did you do it? Hmm. This is very direct and honest. Uh, yeah, that's interesting because it's a very, in some ways, minimalist object. Um, Technically, this is the most difficult thing that I do is constructing these hmm. towers, um, both physically and technically. So these are permanently bonded together. All of the individual elements are permanently bonded together. Um, but before that happens, uh, all of the elements are, are stacked in my studio and balanced in my studio. Just stacked? Yeah, just with no, wow. you know, no adhesive or anything. 
And so, you know, the challenge is to kind of find the balance point, particularly on these top <laughs> ones here on, on, you know, whether or not it's going to survive or not. And then finding the right composition too takes some time. Um, but really, to me, this work is very uh, architectural in some ways. I grew up in this remodel. The, the house was always under construction. Um, and interestingly enough, it was a, or maybe not interesting, depending on your viewpoint, it was a, 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 a very rectangular kind of 1970s Northwest modern house. Um, so this kind of idea of stacking rectangles uh, has always kind of been in my mind <laughs> from the time I was a, a youngster. Um, and so this is really kind of an ex exploration of, of architecture and uh, the purity of the material, I think. Yeah. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about this work is the way that it engages the space around it. Um, I mean, we can see here the sort of projection of these bright blue shadows on the wall, the way, I mean, when you're in the space and the light is changing, if the daylight changes, it'll throw light around the room in different ways. Um, is that something, how did you think about that in terms of like the scale and um, engaging the environment? Well, I think part of what is fun about making these is that you aren't as limited to scale as you are with, say, blown glass. There's certainly an upper limit to the size of blown glass objects. Just by the nature make. of the furnace that you're working in. And, the and just the physical nature of, of what a team can physically lift mm -hmm. and turn. Um, you know, these are definitely more monumental in scale. Um, and of course, being glass, I mean, I, I've always felt that if you're going to work with glass, one should use the properties of the material itself. So casting shadow is important. Um, we opened with the shadow maker outside, mm -hmm. and that's really not about the glass itself as much as it is about the colored composition. Hmm. Um, the towers are about, to me, its physical presence, um, not unlike the fractographs, this record of an event. In this case, it's the physical act of stacking the blocks and building the construction, but then also how the light uh, has another element to it by casting shadows. Have you installed these outside in outdoor spaces? Yeah, I've, I've done um, permanent installations outside of, of uh, these works, and uh, you know, it's really, it's pretty cool to see how they interact with the natural environment as yeah, well. Yeah, I bet. I mean, here we're in a clean uh, gallery space, but with the sunshine, the ability to cast shadows, um, and uh, seeing one that was in the snow, uh, you know, covered with snow was, uh, Pretty spectacular. Too. Yeah, yeah. I bet. So uh, we've seen this sort of these three kind of series that you've been working on um, over the past many years, but kind of focusing on this year. Mm -hmm. What's uh, what's next? You know, there's uh, several things uh, that are going to come to fruition in the next couple of years that have been in process for three or four years. Uh, exactly how that's going to transpire, I don't know, but. <laughs> There's always something next. Well, we'll look forward yeah. to seeing it. Um, thank you so much, John. Yeah. Um, I hope that you all will have a chance to come and see this show in person. It's spectacular. Um, the show is up through the end of the month, September 30th. Come check it out. Check it out online. And thank you. Yeah. It's always a pleasure to have the work in the gallery. Thanks for having me.